Hello, welcome back to the Groove Agent 5 tutorial series. Today we're dealing with jam mode. And just as it says, this is all about performance. This is turning Groove Agent into something that you can jam with. In order to show you jam mode, I need to load a kit that has patterns that are pre-configured uh, to use with this mode. So I've selected uh, Simon Phillips preset, this Groover mix. And we need to click this little button here that says jam mode. Let's turn that on. Now, when I press that button, symbols change on the pads. We see in the top left hand corner, we've got various different images. There are four of them. The first one is next. That's the forward pointing arrow. This means that any pad that's configured as a next pad is going to play once when you click on it. And then once it's finished playing, the next pad that's a standard pad will get played. X means standard. So if I click this intro button, it's going to play that once and then start playing the main riff, uh, rhythm. So all of these orange pads in the middle are all standard pads. If we turn the um, show pad settings options on, you can see the jam mode options down here. And we'll deal with all of these individually shortly. I'm going to actually show you how to build one of these things from scratch, just having a quick whistle stop tour of what it's going to do really. And you can see that this jam state is standard. The third type of state that we've got is the return state, and that's the backwards pointing arrow. And this means once this thing's done, it will go back to the previously played pad. So let's get the main riff up and running. I'm now going to press a fill. Place the fill. Once it's played the fill, it goes back to whatever the previously paid, played standard pad was. If we're playing main five instead, play a fill. Goes back to playing main five. And finally, the fourth type of pad that we've got is the end pad. That's the little stop symbol. If I click an ending, ends jam mode, turns turns the play uh, transport off and we're basically back in wait, wait state again. So four different types of uh, jam mode available to us and that gives us a lot of performance flexibility because now we can just hit these pads, we're you know, playing our instrument, whatever. You hit one of these pads, it'll do that until given an instruction to do something else. We can trigger a fill whenever we want. Once it's played the fill, it'll go back to playing the previous groove. So let's just have a, a minute or so of watching that in action. So it's now playing main two. So I can switch between any of these standard pads whenever I want it, it'll just play that groove until given a new instruction. Let's have a fill. Once it's finished playing this fill, we'll go back to playing main nine. Do that again, different fill. And finally, finish off with an ending. Let's build a jam mode pattern from scratch and we'll see all of the various bits of functionality we need. What I'm gonna do is head over to my browser and I'm just gonna pick some really simple MIDI files I want an intro, I want a verse, 
and a fill. So let's have a review of what we've got so far. Three really simple MIDI patterns. Bit of an intro. There's my standard groove that I'm going to be used. Uh, that I'm going to use as my main pattern. And there's a fill. Let's have a second fill. Okay. Now the first thing that I want to do is select all of my pads and set them to exclusive because we only ever want one pad playing it at a time. My intro pad. I'll set to jam state next. This is already standard. And my two fills I'll have as return. Just for kicks, we'll add that there aren't actually any ending uh, loops on this in this folder, but we'll set that one to stop. And that's literally it, we're good to go. Put it in jam mode. It's gonna play the intro. Now this is a 16 bar intro. Let's say we don't want it to be a 16 bar intro. Let's set it to one bar instead. So that's the intro done. And now we're playing the groove. It's gonna carry on playing this groove until I tell it to do something else. Let's say we don't want that fill to be quite that long. There we go. Let's see what this fill sounds like over here. Once this is finished, it's going to go back to this one again. That sounded good. And then we're done. There's our ending. And that's how simple it is. I don't want to overcomplicate jam mode. It's designed to be simple. Now here's the uh, here's the wrinkle. I can only get jam mode to work properly if I load it onto a kit that already has patterns. If I throw everything away, completely remove the kit and load a kit. on its own with no patterns. I want an intro, a verse, a couple of fills, and we do the same thing again. Set all of our pads to exclusive. This is gonna be our next. This is gonna be our standard. And these are gonna be our return fills. Let's see if that works. So far so good, verse is working absolutely fine as we'd expected, it's just a simple groove. Let's bring the fill in. Let's bring the fill in. Can we, can we bring the fill in, please? How about this fill? Or this fill? Oh, can, well, well let's, let's stop it and we'll play the intro. work. It looks like you've got to have patterns already in a kit. You've got to load kits with patterns in order to have them work. If I do all of that exactly the same, load the same kit, but this time load it with some patterns in, there's all my lovely stuff. Head over somewhere completely empty and do exactly the same process again. Set them all to exclusive, first one to next. That's standard, these two to return, jam mode, go. Don't know what that's all about. 
but it looks like you've got to have a kit with patterns in in order for you to be able to use jam mode functionally i don't know if it's a quirk of my system but um that took me a good couple of hours to figure out what the hell was going on there and there's your situation i have encountered this before that if you drag patterns onto pads that has a completely empty kit with no pattern information there groove agent does seem to be upset so it might be worthwhile and this isn't something i've particularly thought about in the past but basically never loading an empty kit always load your kit with the patterns um, and then throw stuff away that you don't need or move somewhere else just a word of warning if you come up against this same problem at least you've seen me kind of demonstrate it and you can think oh i've seen that you know Anthony worked his way around that by just loading a full kit with patterns and moving somewhere else. And then everything works fine. It's one of those shrug moments, you know, when like Windows crashes and you just go, yep, yeah, Windows crashes, move on with your life. It's crap, but you know, it is what it is. Anyway, that's Jam Mode, a little rant over. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, please consider subscribing, hit notifications, then you'll be sure not to miss my next episode. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.